Stolen Life, The Execution of George Stinney Jr. George Stinney Jr. was only 14 years old when he died in the electric chair after being convicted of murder in just 10 minutes by an all-white jury. He is the youngest person to be executed in America during the 20th century. In March 1944, the African-American teenager was accused of the double murder of two white girls in the quiet, segregated town of Alkulu, South Carolina. The bodies of Mary Emma Thames, 8 years old, and Betty June Binnaker, 11 years old, were discovered on the black side of town with their skulls fractured. The two young white girls had been found brutally murdered, beaten over the head with a railroad spike, and dumped in a waterlogged ditch. Police arrested George after it was found that he had been seen with the pair the day before picking wildflowers. He was collected from his home by police who claimed he confessed to the double murder even though a written confession was never given. Police came for 14-year-old George Stinney Jr. His parents weren't at home. His little sister was hiding in the family's chicken coop behind the house while officers handcuffed George and his older brother Johnny and took them both away. George and his little sister were said to have been the last ones to see the girls alive. Authorities later released the older Stenny and directed their attention towards George. He was questioned in a small room alone, without his parents and without an attorney. It wouldn't be until 1963 that a Supreme Court decision would make a ruling resulting in guaranteeing the right to counsel. Police claimed that Stenny confessed to the killing. They rushed him to trial. After a two-hour trial and a 10-minute deliberation by an all-white, all-male jury, Stinney was convicted of murder on April 24th and sentenced to die by electrocution. On June 16, 1944, he was executed, becoming the youngest person in modern times to be put to death. At the time, 14 was the age of criminal responsibility. His lawyer, a local political figure, chose not to appeal. Stinney's initial trial, the evidence or lack of it, and the speed with which he was convicted seemed to illustrate how a young black boy was railroaded by an all-white justice system. During the one-day trial, the defense called few or no witnesses. There was no written record of a confession. No physical evidence linking him to the crime was ever produced either. His sister claims that the family was not allowed to visit him following his arrest. The three-hour trial is still considered one of the most horrific miscarriages of justice ever carried out in South Carolina. George Stinney Jr. was brought into the execution chamber shaking and crying. He was just 14 and weighed under 100 pounds when he was propped up on the electric chair seated on a telephone book and executed for a pair of murders he probably hadn't committed. The death mask covering his head slipped off his face, revealing tears streaming down. Three minutes and 45 seconds later, attendants carted away George Stinney's lifeless body. Seventy years later, in December 2014, George's murder conviction was overturned by a South Carolina judge. An attorney called for the case to be reopened. After researching, he noticed a massive miscarriage of justice and severe violations in George Stinney's constitutional rights. Also, a man who had served time in the same cell with Stinney and another person who recalled the incident came forward with information that suggested that Stinney had been railroaded and the confession that he gave had been coerced. Stinney's surviving family members were in the courtroom when it was ruled by court order that a wrongful conviction due to serious errors made during the original trial had occurred and the case was vacated. Until next time. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Press the bell to be notified of future uploads. Thank you for watching.